Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to continue on with our discussion about collinearity uh, and betweenness of points, and we're going to talk about the clock problem, which is part of some of the homework for those folks in my class. And uh, it involves differing rates and speeds. So before we get to the clock problem itself, let's go through, let's just say, a stepping stone uh, to figuring out the clock problem. And the problem that we're going to talk about is uh, a problem in which I have two students who are both racing to a given point. One student has a head start but is slower and call him the turtle. And the other student uh, doesn't have the head start, so it starts behind the other student. We'll call him the faster student, uh, or we can call him the rabbit. <clears throat> All right, so we'll say that John, John is in blue and Fred is in red. And both John and Fred are running from school to 7-Eleven. They've discovered that there is one more taquito for lunch, and they both want it. <clears throat> so Fred learns before John, so he's able to get a 200-yard head start, which is good for Fred because he's a little bit slower. So Fred gets a 200-yard head start. Uh, John runs at a speed, however, which is 40% faster than Fred. If Fred runs at a speed 300 yards per minute and 7-Eleven is 1,000 yards from the school, who's going to get to 7-Eleven to get that taquito first? And then, so that's the first part of the question. And the second is, if it's John, so John was the faster one who started behind Fred, how long will it take for John, or how many yards will it take for John to catch up to Fred? Right, so we have to consider the head start that Fred has we have to consider the differing rates of speed. So let's talk about uh, what those might look like. All right, so John, we said, runs at a rate that's 40% faster than Fred. So I multiply 300 yards per minute times 1.4, and I end up with 420 yards per minute. So 1.4 times 300 equals 420 yards per minute. That is John's speed, or his rate of travel. Now, Fred runs at 300 yards per minute, but he all, all already has a 200 yard head start. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the number of minutes that it takes for John to catch up with Fred, and then understanding how long it takes for John to catch up with Fred, whether or not John catches up with Fred before he gets to 7-Eleven. Right, so 420 yards per minute for John, Fred has a head start 300 yards per minute plus the 200 yards so let's talk about how we're going to solve for the number of minutes it takes for John to catch up with Fred. So simply what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, John's speed. He starts really from zero. So we can say essentially that uh, this distance zero plus the n amount of time that uh, John spends running is equal to the amount of time that Fred uh, starts running or is running plus the distance or the head start that he has over Fred, or the point at which he starts. So this is the point that's at 200 yards. John is a point that's at zero yards. From this point, they both start at the same time. Remember, Fred has a head start. So at that same time, we start counting the minutes until John catches up with Fred. So I have a place at zero, he's at zero, plus 420 times the number of minutes traveled is gonna be equal to the place of 200 plus the rate of speed 300 times the number of minutes that Fred has traveled. So I set those two equal to each other. I'm going to subtract 300x from both sides. I get 120x is equal to 200. And then I solve for x. I have 200 over 120, which relates to 5 thirds uh, minutes, which is the same as 1 and 2 thirds minutes, which is the same as 1 minute 40 seconds. Now the question is, in 1 minute 40 seconds, at which point John and Fred are at the same location. Um, has John or Fred uh, gotten to 7-Eleven to get that last taquito? All right, so let's take a look at what we find out. So at 1 minute 40 seconds, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this value back in for x, and we can do that in either equation. We should get the same value or the distance traveled uh, to the point where they catch each other, or John catches Fred. And I see that 420x is equal to 200 plus 30, uh, 300x. I multiply 5 thirds of a minute, or 5 thirds minutes, times 420 yards, because he's traveling, uh, John is traveling at 420 yards 
per minute, and I get 700 yards. So that means at 700 yards, John is going to catch up and then pass Fred at 700 yards. So we know that 711 is 1,000 yards away. So John is going to get to the taquito first. So let's revisit the problem. We start with John and Fred. At the same time, Fred is 200 yards ahead of John. John runs at a faster speed than Fred, and they're both running to get that last taquito at 711. We determine that uh, John runs at a rate that's 40% faster than Fred, so he runs at 420 yards per minute, and Fred at 300 yards per minute. Then we have to figure out what point they have run the same distance, and we determine that by setting both equations equal to each other. The equation is zero yards for John plus a speed of 420 times the number of minutes traveled uh, is equal to 300 times the number of minutes plus 200 yards, which is his initial starting point. And I set and I solve those two equations, or I set those two uh, expressions equal to each other. I solve for x, and I end up with 1 minute 40 seconds. I substitute that value of 1 minute 40 seconds, or 5 thirds, uh, back into the result that we had for Fred, or the expression we had for Fred, and I get a value of 700 yards as the distance at which both Fred and John are going to be at the same point. So uh, John is going to end up passing Fred right after 700 yards. He'll get the taquito first. All right, so let's apply this to the clock problem. And the uh, question is, the nearest second, at what time after 7 o'clock will the hour hand and the minute hand form a diameter of the clock. So there's a little bit of thinking that we need to do. And the thinking that we need to do is to determine uh, really where, uh, between what numbers on the clock, the uh, hour hand and the minute hand form the diameter. So here is the minute hand, here is the hour hand. And we're going to determine that the minute hand is going to be between 1 and 2 or it's going to be somewhere between 7.05 and 7.10 that the minute hand and the hour hand, this is 7.10 and this is 7.05, somewhere between the uh, 1 and 2 numbers on the clock that the hour hand and the minute hand are going to form a diameter, assuming that it's somewhere between 7 and 8 o'clock. All right, so we make that assumption, uh, we make that observation, uh, we can discern that the minute hand will be between 1 and 2 on the clock, or the time will be between 7.05 and 7.10. So the question then becomes, how many seconds after 7.05 will it take for the hour and the minute hand to form that diameter? So I'm going to replace the question. So the question then becomes, how many seconds after 7.05 will it take for the hour and minute hand to form the diameter? And so we, again, like we had the speed of John and Fred, the speed of the minute hand, which is like John who's traveling faster, between 1 and 2, between 7.05 and 7.10, is going to be 1 over 300 units per second. Because between 1 and 2, every second, there are 300 seconds between 7.05 and 7.10. Uh, so for every second, it travels 1 300th of a uh, distance between 1 and 2. So for every second, the minute hand travels 1 over 300 units. Uh, between 1 and 2. And that's again because there are 5 minutes between 1 and 2 times 60 seconds per minute gives us 300 seconds between 7.05 and 7.10. So for every second, uh, the minute hand is traveling 1 300th of a unit uh, between 1 and 2. The speed on the hour hand is going to be slower, so that's like Fred. The sp uh, speed of the hour hand is much slower between 7 and 8 o'clock, because that's where it's moving, um, it travels at a rate of 1, 3,600 uh, units per second. And that's because we have 60 minutes between 7 and 8 o'clock. And there are 60 seconds uh, for each minute. So that gives us 3,600 seconds between 7 and 8. So the hour hand is traveling at a rate of 1, 3,600 of a unit per second. Now... The hour hand, just like Fred, has already traveled a certain amount by the time that the minute hand gets to 7.05 or the 1 here. And that distance is going to be 1 12th of the entire distance between 7 and 8. So at 7.05, the hour hand has already traveled 1 12th of the way between 7 and 8. And so we need to figure out how far past that point 
uh, do the hour hand uh, and the minute hand form that diameter. So we need to represent the distance already traveled by the hour hand in our calculations. So again, we set the two values equal to each other because there's going to be a unique or similar distance from 1 to 2 as there is from 7 to 8. Uh, and so we get the equation 1 over 300x, 1 over 300 times x is equal to 1 3,600 times x plus 1 12th, where x is representing the number of seconds past 705 when the minute hand and the hour hand are directly opposite each other. So remember, this is the distance already traveled by the hour hand. This is the rate at which it travels per second. And this is the rate at which the minute hand travels. So again, you can think of this in terms of this is John. He's running at a speed. He starts at 0, essentially, at 705, or at the 1. And this is John, who starts 1 12th of the way between 7 and 8. All right, so we set those two equations equal to each other. And then we solve for x. So 1 over 300 x is equal to 1 over 3,600 times x plus 1 12th. I'm subtracting 1 3,600 x from 12 over 3,600 x. So remember, when we add or subtract fractions, we need to uh, make the denominators the same or equivalent. So I've multiplied this particular term by 12. So I get 12 times 3,600 x minus 1 over 3,600 x is equal to 1 12th, or 11 over 3,600 x is equal to 1 12th. Now I'm going to solve for x by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of this value, which is 3,600 uh, over 11. And I end up with x is equal to 3,600 over 132. So I have 3,600 um, over 11 times 1 over 12. And I end up with 3,600 over 132. 3,600 over 132 gives me 27.3 seconds. I need to round it to the nearest second, which is 27 seconds. So the question, is, as I stated before, was at now, how many seconds after 705 will it take for the hour hand and minute hand to form the diameter? It's going to be 27 seconds past 705, or the answer is 705 and 27 seconds, the time where the minute hand and the hour hand are in a straight line or form a diameter through the clock. All right, that's it for the clock problem. Hopefully you get it. Uh, thanks for joining us on Math. Please join us for another edition sometime soon.